and evil takes a human form in Regina George. Uh, I'll be fooled, because she may seem like your typical selfish, backstabbing, slut-faced hoe bag, but in reality, she is so much more than that. She's the queen bee, the star. Those other two are just her little workers. Regina George. How do I even begin to explain Regina George? And shove it right up your hairy <laughs> Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? I am going to eat your soul. That is the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. Hell is a teenage girl. What better way to explore this than through the teen movie genre? Teen cinema demonizes femininity. Yet, as Blakey states, media and corporate influences promote creations and incarnations of glamorous hyperfemininity. Regina George, Heather Chandler, and Jennifer Check are antagonistic forces of their films, you nothing before you met me. but are also the most traditionally feminine. This form of hyperfemininity leaves the character either horrifically mean, Come on, Heather, let's take another look at today's lunch, or writes them off as airheaded. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Obviously, there are exceptions. I'm going to Harvard. But these are rare. This hyperfeminine villain often ends up as the dead mean girl. The Dead Mean Girl function as extreme warnings intended to police all young women's social and interpersonal behaviour. Each of their positions as queen bees is unstable, conditional, and ultimately, they are punished for daring to be in them in the first place. The Not Like Other Girls protagonist is the antithesis to this character. A woman considers herself unique if she does not fit into the stereotypical perception of womanhood. While none of these characters were immune to either damage done by their hyperfeminine counterpart or what they turned into in order to face them, they are not punished for their original expression against femininity. But what makes these feminine characters mean? Nastiest skank bitch I've ever. Veronica needs something to write on. Heather bend over. Their femininity is a weapon for survival in their space. The portrayal of dangerous teenage girls oscillates between attraction and repulsion, since they are depicted as desirable objects and, at the same time, blamed for that very objectification. As their body as currency is conditional, it is unsurprising they are mean in attempts to regain control over this power. In each case, these girls sexualize themselves. Halloween is the one night a year when a girl can dress like a total slut and no other girls can say anything about it. Does it not bother you that everybody in this school thinks that you're a piranha? Like I give a shit. They all want me as a friend or a fuck. I'm worshipped at Westerberg. But are also sexualized beyond their autonomy. There are also references to body image issues for each of these characters. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. Two years ago, when you were socially relevant. I am still socially relevant. And when you didn't need laxatives to stay skinny. Gross. Grow up, Heather. Bulimia is so 87. That's where you're going, fat ass! <laughs> <laughs> These girls, while some of the strongest embodiments of the feminine ideal, my afterlife is so boring are still forced to grasp at this standard. You can't sit with us! Demonstrating just how unattainable and conditional it actually is. These characters, with iconic lines, Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. I thought you only murdered boys. I go both ways. Is butter a carb? Confident sexuality and mean personalities are in the end only teenagers and dealing with the pressure of being a teenage girl in the only way they know how. These girls and their counterparts show us the impossibility of correctly executing femininity. I'm really disappointed in you, Katie. Because even when you're performing it to the most stereotypical and desirable degree, it's not good enough.